Happy Thanksgiving, everyone, and welcome, geometry students, to section 5.1, the beginning of chapter 5, perpendicular and angle bisectors. Let's go ahead and jump right into our first concept, and that is triangle mid-segment theorem. So we have a conditional statement to start, as we do with a lot of the theorems. If D is the blank of CA and E is the blank of CB, then blank. And if you're in my class, you can color this in and change it to whatever colors you want. Um, pretty fun to do. But anyway, besides the point, D is the what? Well, if we're looking here at this diagram, we can obviously see that this point D is the midpoint because these two segments have been designated to be congruent. So if those uh, segments are congruent, then that means D must be a midpoint. Okay, moving on, E is the blank of CB. By the same token, if these two segments are congruent, then that means E is the midpoint there also. So we have another midpoint. Now, this theorem states if both of those are midpoints, then we know the following. Let me just get rid of this. I want to clean it up, make it look nice. Okay, then we know that what? Well, by appearances, one thing you might be able to surmise is that DE is parallel to AB. Okay, so that's one thing you might be able to guess just by how they look. But also, we can say that DE equals one half times AB. Okay, so a lot going on here. What do we mean by that? Well, we mean that if this segment here, AB, were, let's say, 20 centimeters long, then that would make DE 10 centimeters long. So why is that the case? Why is it that, number one, these two segments are parallel? Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and draw some parallel lines here. Why is it that these are parallel? And then also that we know that these are half the size of each other. Why is that? Well, let's not just take my work for it. Let's look at uh, Woodstock here, why it works. He's going to teach us why it works. And we have to recall a couple things. One, we have to recall that this is the midpoint formula. And then this is how we calculate slope. And then this is how we calculate distance. Okay, so those three things will be able to prove exactly why this works. Okay, so let's start here. First off, using the midpoint formula, remember how we said uh, D and E are the midpoints? How do we find the location of point D? Well, we know C is 0, 0, so let me go ahead and write that in, 0, 0. Oops, I didn't need this extra one. And I really should change that to green style. Let's go to these green, okay. So if we know that's 0, 0, we can easily find point D by just doing, well, let's label them, x1, y1 x2, y2. So we can do, for the first point, we're going to do x1 plus y, uh, x, x1 plus x2, so that's 4 plus 0. Well, I got it backwards. I should really put 0 plus 4. 0 plus 4, but it doesn't matter. <laughs> divided by 2, comma, y1 plus y2, so that's 0 plus 6 divided by 2. Okay, if we simplify this, we get 2, comma, 3. Okay, so we have point D. I'm going to change the color here to 2 comma 3. So we have our first midpoint, D. And E is going to be a little bit easier. You can still use the formula for E. Since we know that's 0, 0 and that's 6, 0, we could plug it in. Okay, so we can say 0 plus 6 over 2 and then 0 plus 0 over 2. Okay, or you can just say, okay, this is on a straight line. This is on the axis. So I know I can just count. So if I count this over, I'm going to get that this is 3 comma 0 for my other midpoint. Okay, so finding the locations was the first step. Let me just write the arrow, three comma zero. So that was the first step. Now what we can do is we can find the distance of these lines. So we have the location, okay? We know D is here, we know E is here. Now we can find the distance of DE, okay? So we're gonna find the distance of DE so the distance is equal to the square root of x2 minus x1. Well, let's label them real fast. x1, y1, x2, y2. And it doesn't matter which one you call x1 or y1. Okay, but it is important that we label them consistently. 
Okay, I'm gonna square it. Now I'm gonna change it to red just so you can see I'm inputting something here. My x2 is three minus two squared, and then my y2 is zero minus three squared. I'm gonna simplify this further. I'm gonna keep it in blue just because I like the color. Square root, it's gonna be a little bit smaller now. And we're gonna get one squared plus negative three squared. It doesn't really matter if you have a negative inside the parentheses because after we square it, it's gonna become positive. Equals the square root of, that is one plus nine, and that equals the square root of 10. So I'm gonna go ahead and highlight this as my answer for DE. Now, what did I say earlier? Well, I said DE is gonna be half of AB. Let me make that a little bit bigger. So it's gonna be half this segment. So we need to find the segment AB now, okay, and find that distance. So I'm gonna find AB. All right, uh, where do I have room? What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna shrink this. Bear with me here. All right, there we go. I'm gonna put AB just, uh, where should I put it? I'm gonna move this up. I'm sorry if you can't do this, but if you're just following along, just follow along. Not so important that you write it all down perfectly the same way I do. I'm not saying how I write it down is perfect, but you get the point. Okay, so we have the square root of, okay, we're gonna have something squared plus something squared. All right, so we need to label again this time. I'm gonna use purple. So I'm gonna call, ooh, it's already labeled X2, Y2, look at that. So I'm gonna call this one X1, Y1, see it doesn't matter. So now my y, X2 is four minus six, and then I have uh, Y2, six. Um, did I get that right? Four minus six, and then I have six minus zero. Okay, got it right. Let's go on to the next step. Okay, hopefully you guys are getting better at this simplifying deal. So we get negative two squared, and then that's plus six squared. That's gonna be equal to, uh, what is that? Four squared, not, not just four squared, that's just four, plus 36. Square root of that. Okay, and then that equals, let's go um, square root of, what is that, 40? Okay, I didn't, I didn't stay consistent with the color, but I hope you get the point. We got square root of 40. Now you're like, whoa, how do we know what those are equivalent to? Well, I normally I like to simplify the radical and then you can see exactly why it's double without getting a calculator. But for the sake of this one, I'm gonna show you what the decimal is, just so if you don't know how to rationalize at this point, you don't need to worry about that, okay? So this simplified equals about, let me go to about, because I'm rounding here, about 3.16. Whoa, that did not show up. I was looking one way and 3.16. Okay, I'm gonna do the same thing for square root of 40. Type in on my calculator, square root of 40, and guess what I get? I get 6.32. How do those two relate? This is double this one, or 3.16 is one half of AB. So we just proved it using this triangle that we created, uh, labeling all the coordinates, that they have exactly uh, a one half relationship between each other. So we're gonna quickly do um, the slope here, and then we're gonna have, I'm gonna split this up into two videos for the examples, it'll be very short, but I just wanna cover the note section. So the slope, how do we prove that the slopes are parallel to each other? Well, the slope of DE is, now we have a little formula here, and we already have them labeled, so that's terrific. So we're gonna do y2 minus y1, well that's zero minus three, over x2 minus x1, well that's three minus two. So I get negative three over one, equals negative three simplified, okay? So there's my slope for DE. Let's do it for AB now. So my slope for AB, very similar process. Uh, oh, I use purple, that's correct. So I go, I go, 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 six minus, what is uh, y1, zero, over, uh, what is that, four minus six. So I get six over negative two, and that simplifies, what do you know, to negative three. They have the same slope. And if they have the same slope, that, my goodness, I'm not sure what's going on with this pencil. 
If they have the same slope, then that means they are parallel. Okay, so parallel. Clean that up a little bit. Okay, so now we understand why this theorem works, why it's important. Another way to express this, by the way, is DE times 2 equals AB. Okay, that's another way to think of it. And maybe I'll do this just so you can see it a little bit more clearly if we make this red. Whoops. Oops. I'm having troubles with my pencil clearly. Style, let's make it red. And then let's make this one the blue one. Okay, so this is kind of the theorem that's going to guide you through this uh, chapter, not this chapter, this section. So hopefully you found this helpful. Stay tuned for uh, the part two of this video where we're going to dive into the examples.